maybe we should go back to the very beginning. I came to St. George's first in 1964. A lot of you weren't around probably in 1964. So you won't know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I left Ireland in October. I was supposed to have come earlier, but as you know, Jawaharlal Nehru died in 1964. So the Indian Embassy in Dublin was busy and they didn't have time to give a visa to an 18-year-old applicant. They had more important things to do. But anyhow, eventually I got the visa and left from Dublin, flew to London, and then flew from London within a couple of hours to Delhi by Air India. And we dropped off in a number of places, I remember. And I was met in Delhi in the early hours of the morning by Brother Byrne, not the Brother Byrne who was principal here, Brother Raymond Byrne, who died in, <coughs> in Derudun, and he's buried in the cemetery across the way. He took me across to the so-called residence at the time, T8, and it's today an officer's mess. There was no residence as such at the time for the brothers. And we had a cup of tea. That's about all I kind of uh, felt like having. And then he took me into the city, and we went to Nehru's Samadhi, and. Gandhi's Samadhi and then he took me to the bus stop and he gave me some money, no idea how much he gave me and he gave me a small slip of paper and on that paper was written St. Joseph's Academy, Rajpur Road, Derrida and I was put on the bus and he says all the best. Well I think all the best was putting it my way. We travelled in this, uh, those days there were no air conditioned buses. We went on for hours and hours and hours. Crowds everywhere. And eventually we pulled into this place where there were literally millions of people. And I said, thank God we have arrived. And I took out the slip of paper and I showed it to the chap sitting next to me. And I said, have we arrived? And he says, we're only halfway. <laughs> it happened to be Muzaffarnagar. <laughs> so anyhow, we pulled in to the bus stand and everyone got out and were buying stuff all kinds of sweet stuff and some were having tea and all that and I didn't feel like any of it because there were, as well as millions of people, there were millions of flies. And I said, nothing, no, I better stay away from all this. And then I noticed one thing. I saw a chap selling bananas. And I said, I know these are safe because I can peel them. So I went over to this chap and I handed him some money, no idea how much I gave him. And he gave me a whole armful of bananas. So I walked back onto the bus and there was a famous Irish uh, um, weekend show called The Late Late Show, it still uh, goes on. And at every show there was a surprise. And the host would say, you know, introducing some, this particular point, he would say, you know, this, that, and the other, and he says, there's one for each one in the audience. Somebody would be advertising something. So it was the same with my bus. There was a banana for each one on the bus. So anyhow, off we went, eventually, and we again traveled for 
hours and hours and hours. I remember I started in Dublin and I was going non-stop. <clears throat> Eventually we arrived up in Derudum. And this chap who was sitting beside me took me up to the gate, to St. Joseph's Gate. And the gentleman came to the gate. I remember his name was Mr. Rowett. He was a study master. In those days, St. Joseph's had a boarding school. And um, had boarding, rather. And he took me up to the brother's residence. Now, I remember, nobody was expecting me. Nobody ever heard of me. I was a total stranger. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a single brother in Derudun or Missouri. And I had to introduce myself and say that I'm a patrician brother. I have just landed from Ireland. And this is the address I was given. So anyhow, they put me up for the night. And the next day, I was put on another bus. And at this time I had a companion, Brother John Campy. So we started off for, from Derudun, from Missouri, and I was sitting in the first seat on the left. And I will never forget those turns, because the bus seemed to go out over the turn, particularly when you were sitting in that particular seat. And I said, my God, talk about the journey from Delhi. There's no comparison. Anyhow, we eventually reached Bata. And in those days, you got off there to come to St. George's. So I put my suitcase of whatever I had on my, well I carried it anyhow. And we walked up from Bata to Barraganj and up the slope and landed here. So that was my introduction to St. George's 56 years ago. And I hope I haven't bored you with details. I'm just going back to the very beginning and as the song says, it's a very good place to start. So, since then I have been linked with St. George's. I, we traveled a bit, we went to Bombay, we went to Kanur, uh, and then I ended up in Delhi after that for a few months, and then up to St. George's again for a few months, and then all the way down to Chennai. So I was there for three years and I learned many things apart from literature. I learned how to eat uh, with my hands <coughs> from a banana leaf. And I learned to struggle into buses and out of buses and into the suburban uh, trains and out of them. So. My first official posting to St. George's was in 1968. And then since then, so 68, 69, 70, 71. That's the least three years I'm missing from there. <laughs> so since then, as I said, I have been closely linked with St. George's. And it's always, I have very happy memories looking back right back to 1964. Once I got off that last bus at Butter, I have had very happy memories of St. George's. Because as you know, when you work in a boarding school, the affection that you get from the students and the parents, and of course the close association of working with the teachers is something that really gels and bond, bonds you. Um, something you will never forget. And the students never forget you. The parents never forget you. And that is the big difference, of course, between a day school and a boarding school. So those of us, all of us here, have the privilege of working in St. George's, which is, uh, as you know, essentially boarding. And 
we are lucky to have made so many friends down the line, and that's what keeps us going. That uh, enthusiasm from the students, the affection from the students, and you got a sense of it there a few minutes ago that uh, they never forget you really. Okay, I don't know if there's a time limit on, on this. Uh, because I've travelled halfway around the world in the space of a few minutes. So with that, thank you for organising today's farewell. You won't believe this, I have left St. George's on one, two, three. This is the official third uh, leaving. But this is the first farewell that I've had in all these years from St. George's. So I'm very, very grateful to the people who organized this farewell, the brothers, the teachers. Thank you so much. And thank you, ma'am, for your um, kind words, something I will cherish and remember, and hopefully continue to live up to your expectations of me. So all the very best. The best of luck to all of you and keep well, particularly these days when, you know, every paper, every magazine, every speech for that matter reminds us of how vulnerable we are in these times. So look after yourselves and may God bless you all.